Hey, what up, everybody? It's the Sports Chasers Podcast coming to you live and direct. It is currently 7.20 out in the east. 6.20 for my central standard time people. 5.20 for my mountain time. 4.30, 4.20, excuse me, for the west coast peaks. It's the Sports Chasers Podcast coming to you live and direct. Yo, where there's no hot takes, there's no nonsense when it comes to sports. Yo, this week, man, we got a full lineup going on today, man. Yo, we're going to talk about NFL Week 2 in review. Five games we'll touch on. Uh, Dallas and Atlanta, crazy game. Seattle versus New England. Um, A couple other games. We'll talk about the NBA playoffs. Yo, the Heat are three, uh, up three to one. Let's see what's going on with the Heat, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, What else? MLB? They're entering their last week of the regular season. They about to start the crazy postseason going on with them. Yo, hockey. Hey, the Tampa Bay Lightning are up two to one in the Stanley Cup Finals. And we'll talk about my main man, Deion Sanders. He is now the head coach of the Jackson State um, football team in, in Mississippi, man. So with all that said, man, yo, Let's holler at the boys. Stand up, start off my man, Mike Mills. Mike Mills, what's up, kid? Good evening Mike and Mills. salutations. What's up? How y'all living? Uh, good evening and salutations from Michael Mills. <laughs> um, well, Mike kind of threw me off. Eric, you there? What's going on? What's going on? How y'all living out there, man? How y'all doing, man? What's up? What's up? Good. What's good? What's good? What's good? My man DA, what's good, DA? Yo, father, what's going on? Huh? Everything good. I'm a baby mother good. I'm a people good. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Irie, Irie. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I understand. Okay. My man, my man. And last but not least, D Dub. What's good? What's what's popping, kid? What's popping, man? What's good, man? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Yo, chilling. You know, chilling, man. Good chilling. Still, another another week. Another good week. Still, good still. Exhausting week. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. That it is, man. That it is. That it is. That it is, man. But um, we got a lot to delve into today. Um, like I said, we will do the week NFL week two in review. Um, we'll talk about else in the NBA, MLB, Deion Sanders. And since we got a lot to get into, man, yo, let's just jump right to the chase, man. The NFL week two, Dallas versus Atlanta, man. Uh, 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 hold hey, on, hold on. With... What, what, one more. Whoa, whoa. Before we start this shit, the NFL got what they want last weekend, right? By by playing the season. Everybody said on every freaking channel that soft tissue injuries were coming. Seven ACLs last weekend alone. I'm not saying this, it is what it is. But without training camp, without getting those those muscles in the right place for the season, this is what we deal with. So you got some quote unquote, you know, I guess I would call them second tier stars, um, probably because they came all from my team. But um, the reality is, when it when it hits some bigger dudes later on in the season. That that's that's what we that's what we're gonna have to deal with, man. And there won't be any asterisks, but there's sure there's gonna be a lot of great players not playing by the end of this season. By the bang. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of high profile uh injuries last week. Um we got Saquon Barkley from my Giants. Um looked like the whole Niners team went down from Garofalo to um Morset. Um, I think Kittles is still out. Kittles is out. Is that correct, DA? I, don't, I you might play this weekend. I, I'm not sure how bad Kittles was. Um, yeah. I know, I know for a fact. I think Mon Street and um, my man Bosa is gone. They both ACL'd out. So yeah, um, they're gone for the year. Um, Same thing with um, with back, Barkley. So, yeah. So um, I think it was seven last weekend. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, we there was a lot of injuries going on. So um, as I was saying, I wanted to start off with the Dallas and Atlanta game. Um, 
where was I at? I'll start with um, Eric. Eric, what's your thoughts on the Dallas Atlanta game? Um, Dallas was down by 15 points with four, with four minutes to go, and they wind up winning this game. Eric, talk to me about how everybody's talking about how Dallas won the game, but let's talk about how Atlanta lost the game. Well, let's talk about it. Atlanta lost the game just like they lost the Super Bowl, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's the coach. I don't know if it's the the, the sea of coaches. I don't know if it's the organization where you get too lax. Yo, man, you cannot do that, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm all for once you have let me let me phrase it right. Once you you have to keep the the pedal to the metal until the clock says zero or whatever the case may be. Okay, B- because of exactly what happened in that game. Okay, there is no. So yes, Atlanta lost the game, but Dallas did have to do what they did to win the game. So it's it's half and half, but it's more so on Atlanta side than anything else. There is no reason why you start out the way that you did, and you lose a game like that. The only good thing, the only good thing about it is that it's early in the season. That's the only, if this was playoff implications later on down the road, man. Um, yeah, but uh, that's, 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 Dak played phenomenal. Um, you got hats Pay off Dak. to him. Pay Dak. Pay Dak. Yeah, you, you, you got to, you got to give, I mean, and, and the whole team, of course. But you you have to you have to give it to Dak, man. He, he played lights out, man. But uh, Atlanta, they they got some soul searching to do. That, that's all I can say, man. It's, it's, we've seen it too many times from that organization, man. In high profile games, it's not supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Milley, what's your thoughts on the Dallas Atlanta game? Um, it's not much to be said. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. The Falcons did what the Falcons do. They didn't play no defense, and they dropped the ball at the end. What the, they put up big numbers, and then they lose. That's just what they do. Last year, they blamed it on injuries. Matt Ryan was 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Ryan no, was. No, I'm saying Matt Ryan threw for 24 for 36, four touchdowns, no interceptions, 273 yards. Um, it's Matt Ryan numbers. That's what he do. Last year, they blamed Gurley it on the were, defense. Gurley was uh, – Gurley rushed for 21 attempts. 81, or excuse me, that'll be 61 yards. No TDs. Um, go ahead, Mike. I was just kind of throwing that in there for you. Atlanta, that's what they do. Last year, they blamed it on injuries because their defense was a little broken up, but they didn't do nothing really to improve it this offseason. They let one of their best pass rushers right. and Vic Beasley walk. So this is what they're going to do. Atlanta fans, just pray they keep scoring because defense is non-existent in the city of Atlanta. And this is going to keep happening. Um, D-Dub, what's your thoughts on Atlanta, kid? You know, we could talk all day about how they lost it, and that's and that's that's part of the re- – that's the main reason. But I'm looking at Matt Ryan's stats, 24-36, 273, four touchdowns, no interceptions. And then we got our main man, Julio Jones. Two rece- – two – for 24 yards. And nobody's talking about Julio Jones. And he dropped one. And he, and he dropped and, one and in the end zone. A one. major one. And, and, and to, to go up. He, he was yeah. hurt for some of that game. So I, I, let me just and, say that. And, and it takes well, a lot well, of energy. Well, 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 well folks. No, 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 no. no I'm not that giving, bag. I'm that not, bag weighs a lot. I'm not giving you that because that's nah, it. If, nah, he, if, nah, he's, on, if he's no. on the field. If he's on the field, he could play. He can. That man was but, on the field. Hey, I'm just what, saying that. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Let the me, bag was too let heavy. Me I got you. Let me let me let me, let me stop. One of one of the sports chasers mantras is right. One of the ten commanders of the sports chasers is if you're on the field, Let's keep it real. <laughs> you're on the field. Keep it real. Whatever you're on the field, you can play. That's just how I'm looking. Right, now, you can play. now let's get back to. Uh, this onside kick that apparently none the five or six players that was around the ball didn't understand that they could they could go and advance the, and get the ball. It's just the so ahead, the, the kicking team can't do it. Right. It has to go up ten yards. For whatever reason, the coaching staff 
they didn't coach up their guys because I was hard on the guys because I said, yo, man, come on, man. You, if you've been watching football for any length of time, you, you, you sh- we done seen, how many times have we seen onside kicks? And nine times out of 10, they don't work. It's only a few oh, times that they do. But this occasion, it worked. And it worked in the Cowboys' favor for them to get the 40 to 39 uh, win. So, you know, I can say kudos to the Cowboys, but the Cowboys had no business winning this game, period. But that's right. just my take on it's it. Facts. It wasn't a surprise Super Bowl after halftime on sidekick. That was a, uh, yeah. that was a, yo, we need the ball back. Like, like, my, my, everybody, everybody in the country, if I dropped you from Mars and you, you knew that, hey, they need that to get the ball a, back. That wasn't the Tony Romo. He's going to fade to the back of the end zone and cut. Right. No, like, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. You know what's coming. coming. Jump on the ball. You jump on the ball, game is over. I'm done, Kev. <laughs> DA, go ahead, brother. I'd say we relegate uh, Atlanta back to the SEC and put Mississippi <laughs> State in the NFL. How many times are you going to do this shit, man? Come on, man. I mean, listen, man. Coaches, coach, players, play, owners, own, GMs, GM. You know, you got talent evaluators like everybody else does. You know, right. you got coaches like everybody else does. Right, so there should be uh, uh, never be a situation where, for instance, dude is saying, and I, and I get the dude props, man, because I, I, I um, we go way back, man, me and Belichick, because I'm, I'm a Niners fan. So the only years back in the '80s and we was battling hard with the Giants, Belichick was the coach, was the defensive coordinator, and and I believe in that that um, situational coaching, man. And, and you haven't lost the Super Bowl to this man. If nothing else, Atlanta should be all in on situational coaching for every situation. Yo, listen, fellas, this is this, that, that, that. We can do this. We can do that. It's only 11 dudes you're talking to. Right. Right? Before you go out on the field, give them a brief overview of what's happening. As D said, everyone knew it was going to come. Just tell them, hey, you can jump on the ball. They can't. Ta-da! It's pretty simple. <laughs> you, you, jump know, the ball, you jump on the ball, you, guys. Game is over. Yeah, because you did not, you know, remember, the line of scrimmage is where the ball's kicked from. You can go get it. They can't get it before it goes 10 yards. Now, that's up Correct. to the, that, and, you know, I think me and D talked about it. He's like, yo, do the players, the players. I said, yo, man, these kids forget so much. You know, they get they're getting inundated with a lot of stuff as is when you join the team. You know, right. and, and you know, <laughs> you, you you're not starting, you know, no, nobody that's on the kick off kick return team usually isn't a starter. All the rest of that stuff they get going through their mind. It, it's just real simple. Say, hey guys, you can jump on this ball. And we out. We just saved the game. Not situational coaching. They don't draft right. They let go of the wrong players. Maybe Atlanta don't want to be here. Right. And that's called great leadership. There you go. Hey, same dude is here. He's got, he got his job. And he ain't lose his job. And he ain't win nothing. But he still has that gig, man. Ding, ding, I'm out. Right, right. Yo, that's... um. That's something that we have to look at as far as, you know, Atlanta and their – where they want to go forward. That's that's a hard pill to swallow. To hey, Kev, like it's so bad I that the that legendary one. Deion Sanders was on first take this week and was like, man, I'm just so disgusted with this team. He was – he's like – that's and that's his – that's the place that he built. He doesn't even have the answer for what's so – why are nope. they so – Awful and bad. I, I I got no words, man. I got no words. I got no words for how they do. So, well, well, congratulations we'll right to the Dallas Cow- Cowboys. They won and won. So, yeah, Atlanta's zero two. Next. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Um, so we'll move right along. Yo, to to me to the to the best game of the week, Seattle versus New England, man, where New England 
um, led by Cam Newton. It took a pretty much a goal line, goal line stance for Seattle to pull that game out on Sunday night to beat the Patriots. And um, to me, um, Russell Wilson continues to ball out. And he continues to ball out as I got some light out here now. Um, Russell, I'm trying to see how much he threw for, but we'll start with um, DA. DA is a huge, as we call him, Bill Cosby supporter, yeah, yeah, as we call him. Man. That's my man, man, because he, he took the money. He ain't bitch about it. He said, I don't care who you give me. We're going to compete every year. I don't care if we go out to the to the, to the the gas station and I get the two dudes <laughs> buying Newport cigarettes and the dude getting them black and miles. Mm -hmm. We're going to come in here. We're going to compete today because he's a leader of men. I, I think it was a great game. I think they both played well. Uh, uh, that Adams trade from the, from the Jets is the already – is, is already uh, reaping dividends. rewards. Yeah, man, because th yep. that kid can play. I, I'm, Yeah, uh, I'm not going to get into that. That kid can play. Um, yeah, because it's going to lead us right into the Jets, and I'm not even touching the Jets no more. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, done yeah. with them. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, DJ Metcalf is a monster. You know? Yeah. Uh, Eric, Eric where you at? Eric, Eric, where you at? No, no, go ahead, DA. Eric has his oh, okay. um, sign. You know, we, we got this yeah. hashtag sign that's, going on. That's there it. Go. Uh, there yeah. you go. So my man yeah. Metcalf. That, that, that's that. That's that. Um, offensive line a little better than what it was last year. Uh, D line, I think they lost my man Bruce Irvin and, and someone else uh, in that game. But um, they 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 played very hard, man. It was a good game, and and I got to give props out to um, New England as well. So like, if Buffalo doesn't take their thing seriously. And and my man, Mr. Allen, bowled right. out this weekend, too. But if they don't take that thing seriously, well, you know, boy, you know, New England's right. not giving it away. They're not giving away the AFC. No. Like, no. you're going to have to come get that thing. So, no. that said, I, I am I, I'm encouraged, man, by both sides. And again, I mean, you know, I don't know why anybody would be surprised a dude that was the MVP of the league two years ago is balling out. Like, what do you, what do you think he can't play now? Come on, man! Stop. Come on, Cam is nice. I think. I think. Let me. Let me. Nice. So, Cam, Cam is nice. But let me. Let me. Let me talk about the Russell Wilson part, though. I think. I think Russell is finally getting his respect. Like this is his team for real, for real, for real. And I, I just believe he's getting his due. You know, when they had the, the Legion of Boom there, you know, those guys were the leader of the team. But now, Russell Wilson is actually absolutely the leader, as Da called it, the leader of men. And he's taking the money. He said, "Yo, come, yo, get on my back. I'm gonna take you. It don't matter who it is." Yeah, and, I, you know the yo, one thing you got to respect, you gotta respect that. The one thing kept with that is Go like ahead, yeah. I, I, I do get a little upset. Like dudes is just now talking that MVP shit with him. Like the last two years, he could have right. been MVP. Real talk, like real talk. You don't have to be 13 or whatever, dog. Like he's the MVP probably last. He was the most valuable person on this team for the last four years. Like, without him, they're not close to playoffs. And that's my definition. Right. Like, without him, they're not close to playoffs. And, I, you, know, and you throw no. another quarterback in there, you, you know, no. Uh -uh. Ben Roethlisberger, no. You just start throwing names in there. And it, no, it's, it needed him to do it. So, um, and I saw that <laughs> twice last year. And they played the Niners. Like, it was like, wow. That dude's real serious. Like he's not real going serious. to lose this game. Mm -hmm. So um, that being said, man, um, I give him his props. Man. He's a, he's he's a real serious dude, and he probably should have been in line for right. more MVPs than just them talking about it this year. So, in my opinion. So, Mike Mills, what's your thought on that? Um, that, that Sunday night game, man, really great right. game, man. Really Before we game. talk about the game, I mean. Uh, I think the last two years he had insurmountable odds, like Mahomes and Lamar. Nobody thought that was going to happen, and their records was better. But I do think he should have been in the conversation. I don't know about four years now. We're not going to Russell Westbrook. Oh. Just, just give it to niggas now. You got to win these games. <laughs> so, but, um, nah, that was a good showdown. I mean, it was Belichick turn to make the bad call it. at the goal line. That was a terrible call at the goal line. Terrible. You – 
Like that was that was he wasn't on the one. Like like I remember when they used to do that with Brady when they was fourth and in inches and Brady had scooted in there, but they had a lot of space and they had Tom. Cam could have got a throw off. Yeah. I don't yeah. think they should have went with that play. This is another one that. where everybody knew what play was coming. Everybody knew that play with Cam was coming. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Because he'd been running it with Brady for 20 years. Like, he could have thought of something better. Like, that could have been something. Like, but other than that, that was a that was a that was a good that was a good showdown. That was a really good league game. I hope they continue. They probably won't. They're gonna start giving us garbage games again. But oh, like tonight. But that's a that's a uh, that's a whole nother story. Tonight's that's only because the Dolphins bad. I kind of like I kind of like miss you. He kind of. I'm, I'm sorry to get off track, but Kev, they they got to do something with this man. They know this this Thursday night games, Monday night games should not be trash games. I'm sorry. Save the trash no, games for about, Sunday. It's about it's about Monday, B. Yeah, this is a one o'clock game. A Sunday one o'clock. It's about, it's about it's about it's about it's all about the money. Yeah, I get it, but Thursday night, this is Thursday night is your Monica too. So why yeah. why we got the trash can game for Thursday night? Well, uh, my, well maybe they thought Tua was going to start against um, Minshew. I don't know, but I did one more bad game from from um, what's his name? He'll be out of here. Fitzpatrick gonna throw for five hundred tonight just because we keep talking about him. That's yeah, how he right, do. You're right about that. That's that's how he does too. He's he gonna bet. throw for five fifty tonight, <clears throat> and then next week he's gonna throw for twenty. But yes. that's neither here nor there. But like, Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. Russ has really evolved into a leader because I was one of those people like when they started sliding away from the Legion of Boom, like Yo, what are they doing? They really think. But Russ has made a believer out of me. He's this might be his MVP. Yeah, this might be it. Might be it, man. Might be it. E Eric, what's going on? Let us know about the Monday night game. Um, it was an extraordinary game, as everybody else has said, and I'm sure if, if you haven't watched it, you didn't see it. Sunday you know night. What we're talking about, my bad, Sunday night. Sunday, um, yeah. If you don't know mm-hmm. what we're talking about, then you must have been under the rock. Um, I'm going to say this Great about game. about Seattle. Um, I mean, until last year, they were the cream of the crop um, as far as the NFC West goes. And uh, partly, well, mostly of that was because of the Legion of Boom and the run game that they had. And, you know, this is what you're supposed to do um, as a GM, as, as, as leaders of an organization. You see the transition. You know what I'm saying? You see you don't have those caliber players on that side of the ball. You start trusting your, your number one guy and your quarterback. So you build around him. He had, you could say what you want about um, Doug Baldwin and them cats that he had at receiver. They were trash. They were trash in the sense of they were possession receivers. They did exactly what they were supposed to do at that time. You mm-hmm. run the ball, run the ball, play action, catch the ball. You wasn't looking for no rack yardage or anything like that. Now you have the monsters that they have over there. You got Lockett, you got Metcalf, and you got uh, uh, I forget the other catch name. It slips my mind. But you have absolute burners. You have guys that's going to beat you up at the, <laughs> at the uh, line of scrimmage to get free. And Russell Wilson is going to buy enough time to allow those guys to get free. Mm. Um, so again, I, I just want to say that 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 is that is one thing that we always talk about with these organizations, man. You have you have pieces, you need to build around those pieces. And I think Seattle did a beautiful job in transitioning from the era of the Legion of Boom to what we have now, um, which is basically putting the shine on Russell Wilson. Um, it's always been there. But now he has pieces to help him excel to another level, and they're doing that flawlessly so far. Um, New England, I, I, did y'all really think that New England was just going to fade away because they got oh we got broken down? Cam, Cam is going to bring a new wrinkle to that team. They still got the same coaches. They still have a lot of the same pillars of that defense. It's still there. Um, they ran the ball with Burkhead. <laughs> and it was getting first downs here and there. Yo, man, you you cannot go against Belichick, man. You can say what you want, think what you want, whatever. The man is an absolute winner, and he is going to find a way. Buffalo, don't think that <laughs> the, the, the division is all yours because it's not. Uh, I think New England um, shed a light on themselves uh, Sunday night. Um, Cam had an extraordinary game. Um, I that last play was, eh, I mean, that was kind of like a lackluster end to that game. But 
it is what it is, man. So it, it was a, it was a great game, and um, like to see what these two teams do uh, going forward. Uh, D Dub, what's your thoughts on the game? I mean, you gave a little bit, but go ahead. Yeah, um, uh, facts about Russell Russell Wilson, man. I think it's it's his time, man. He's going to have to beat out the young boys, but uh, he's not. I mean, he's not much older, but um, Wilson, man, he's he's phenomenal, man. Like like D said, man, he goes out there, picks out whoever. And says, "Yo, come on, get in the car. We're gonna ride." And he just puts up numbers, man. Twenty-one and twenty-eight, two eighty-eight, five TDs, one interception. Come on, man. Uh, you got a mm-hmm. DK Metcalf, who I who I love, by the way. Tyler Lockett is a speedster. Uh, David Moore, Chris. Car- I mean, all those dudes, man. They caught everybody. Everybody did their job, man. They did their job. And um, you know, that was just a, it was just a great uh, Sunday night game. Um, you know, for for both teams. And, um, you know, New England, they won in one and one. So, you know, this, this, the season's still early. Uh, they won in one. Uh, Cam, Cam, I think he threw a little bit too much, but it was pretty much um, uh, not too many long passes. It was um, pretty much over the middle of the field sure. that I can remember. Oh, uh, yeah. Over the and Cam, Cam was 30 or 44. I think he, he threw a lot. You know, he almost threw for 400 yards, 397. That's 400 in a TD. He had one mistake with the interception. Definitely, definitely different but, uh, than when he was in Carolina. Oh, yeah. But you Julian know. Edelman is just – he's still Julian Edelman, man. He's, he catching balls, man. Eight, eight receptions, 179 yards. This guy, you know. So, uh, New England is going to be there still. I, I don't care. The Jets are still bad. Miami, I don't know. Buffalo is probably the only, <laughs> only guys that, you know, you got to contend with. And I think they could beat them. I mean, they could, they probably, they probably split this year. Between the two, they probably because Josh Allen is playing well. So, you know, um, hey, somebody had to lose. Uh, Seattle is, is is a good team, so they two they go to two and zero. Oh, my uh, New England goes to one and one. So, um, you know, we'll see. Good game though. Definitely a great game, man. That was to me the best game of the day. Um, that Seattle and New England game. Moving right along, um, we're gonna move to one of Dorian's favorite quarterbacks in the league. The LA, the LA Rams defeated the Philadelphia Eagles 37-19 on Sunday. Um, <laughs> Dorian's favorite quarterback, Jared Goff, threw 20 of 27 for 267. He had three TDs. He had zero interceptions. Um, and hey, you know, Goff is looking pretty, pretty good these days. And I'll start yes. off with DA since that's his man. That was the battle of the bags. The battle, <laughs> the battle of the bags. Of the bags. They both got their bags the same year. Um, uh, oh, I, I, I'm not gonna say either one really deserved it. Um, not in my not in my estimation. Um, I mean, second year of your contract, you shouldn't be extending no one for another five years for millions of dollars. That's stupid. It's football. You have them for five years, man. Right. Right, but it's okay. Right. But that's it. I didn't think the Rams were, and, and I knew they were a better team. They had better receivers. Uh, the Lions healthier, um, but I definitely didn't see them being that much more better than Pennsylvania. Right. Hmm. So this dude here is throwing the ball over cats, behind cats, throwing it in the dirt. He's running what he's throwing it one way. The receiver's going another way. I'm like, what the hell is like, you know, so you know, you get the excuses. That Two interceptions, by the way. Oh, yeah. You get these these coming Monday, these guys, oh, him and the receivers got to get on track together. They weren't on track together. What the hell? Everybody else was on. My thing is you didn't have any special situation, which is why I don't hear that, right? Because you didn't have a situation where Philly couldn't practice, and everybody else in the league could practice. That didn't happen. Can I ask you a question? Is anybody new on this roster that I don't know about that wasn't there last year? Because I see Deshaun Jackson, Zach Ertz, Miles Sanders. Like, you know, dudes hurt. They ain't doing this. I'm like, what's my JJ? What are we doing here? Right? If you're not bringing in guys to help this team win, what are we doing? Right? And again, I go back to my adage. Coach is coach. Players play. GM's GM. Owners own. Scout, scout. 
Everybody does their job, and you're supposed to have a team. That's so right. why every week I got to hear an excuse about why this guy is not good and it's not this guy's fault. Dude, come on, man. Because no one else does that. This is what I'm saying. Like, it, it's not fair because no one else does this. Listen, I know they have some injuries. I know they lost some players, I, I imagine. Um, uh, reality is 37 to 19 is, is not indicative of a program that was in the Super Bowl a few years ago. It's supposed to have one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I, I, I don't know where they're supposed to go from there. And I'm not bagging on these guys because I don't like them. I'm just saying, you know, I, I have a problem with the fact that some dudes get paid before it's time for them to get paid. And when you do that, you set yourself up for these situations where at the end of the day, keeping it straight, buck, Wentz would be like, yo, you know, shoot, my money guaranteed. I ain't really got to be good. Because in every league, and we've heard this from all the famers, they'll tell you there are dudes in the league just because they could make it into the league. That don't mean they love winning. That don't mean they do that. That, that, that don't mean they about that winning life and, you know, being TB12. Not trying to be funny, but, dude, it, it happens all the time. Demarcus Russell. Uh-huh. You got that exactly. bag. It was like, yeah, you know, I practice. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go, uh, I, don't, I don't like this go game eat. that much, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm already paid. Yeah, I'm paid. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm practice. I'm going to practice for? Okay. Battle of the bags. <laughs> Battle of the so, bags. So and that's real talk, bags, D.A. Um, that's, that's real talk, though. So that's why, that's, why I, that's why when I see these guys get paid early, I have a problem. Um against dudes that, you know, have to You are stopping change. free enterprise. I don't care about the free enterprise, man. It is the free enterprise. It's there. Nothing I can do about it. All I can say is that if for the team perspective, I hate to see when that happens and dudes stop playing. Because I've seen that happen more times than I've seen guys get the money early and kick it into another gear. Ask yourself if, right. ask yourself when Tom Brady's Rookie contract was extended. Did it happen in year two, three, four, or five? Happened in five. They extended them. And it's just contract basic human nature, right? Over. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'm not, you know. Basic, Evidently, it's not. So. Basic human nature, man. Yeah, that's what I see it as. But again, the people, something before they, they, they're worthy of it, and this is what you got, man. Mike Mills, what do you think about this? Um, the the Rams and their two and zero start. Um, let's see. The Rams defense has been a lot more impressive than I thought it was going to be two games going in. They've been, they have been looking a lot better. Philly, on the other hand, Carson is healthy, but I don't know for how much longer they got to do something with that O line. It ain't just. It's like everything is wrong with that team. It's like they was up against Washington, they couldn't finish it. Then the Rams came out there and just outplayed them. And then it's like they receivers. Like you said, GM's got a GM. So you know you need more weapons. You know you need more weapons. You just got to you gotta make those calls. What are you drafting a quarterback in the second round for that you have no intention on starting and you have nobody to throw the ball to? And, Mike, like you just said, if you, it's, a, it's a salary cap sport, man. Yeah. If you give all the money to him, you can't have an offensive And that was my next point. My next point was – with the money thing, you jump start and you, I feel like with every franchise quarterback, there's a clock. I feel like you jump start your clock a little early. Like, you got to let them go out there. Of course, you're going to throw the bums the first couple of years if the team already don't have a star in place. You're going right. to throw to whoever you got. But after, like, year two or three, you need to go get him a superstar receiver. You need to go get him somebody he could throw the ball to. And then once he proves he could throw the ball to that person, then you go give him some money. You don't give him no money before you build up around him and then you start subtracting. See, they started subtracting too early. I think we should make Mike uh, the Jets uh, GM. Jesus Christ. Huh? Like now yeah. he's – Yeah, because he's, he's talking about – he's talking about building from within to outside, which is how you basically build a football team. Go ahead, Mike. That's how you yeah. build. You O-line, D-line, and then you skill position, and then you find your quarterback. It's just skill position. Yeah, it's, it's well, Mike, not hard. Mike, we might need to send you to East Rutherford, man. 
Yeah, because what they doing to uh 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 what's his face? Uh what what what's his uh what's the quarterback name? Um that my the mind. Jets. The Jets Sam Donald. Sam Donald. What they doing Sam to Donald, him is yeah, criminal, they... man. It, it is it is ridiculous. Yeah, he this is what happens, man. This is what exactly what we be talking about. This is what happens when you know you just you grab the talent and then you don't have nothing else or you don't even get nothing else to put around them to make them successful. And you know, nope. you just you just uh rob them of their career. That's what I that's how I feel. But this is not about the Jets. That's this true. is about uh, Carson Wentz, though. But go ahead. Nah, and, we're not talking. We're not. We're not. We're not talking about the I'm Jets. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But, no, Michael, you finishing your point? I'm gonna give it to hey. Eric. And my last thing is that the Rams are really looking like McVay is looking like the bounce back man. He really looking like like he came in hot. Mm-hmm. He did. They made the Super Bowl the next year. And the last year they had a little letdown. Got, but he's he looking home. like yeah. He looking like all right. You know what? I'm gonna take that on the chin. And we're going to figure this out. And they don't have no cap space. So I don't know how he's doing it, but he making it happen. So shout out McVay. Shout out the Rams. Even though we kind of made this about the Eagles, shout out to him. That was yeah. a good one. Oh, uh, E? Go ahead, E. You know, I, I was about to start out with, I was about to put up hashtag uh, bench Carson Wentz, but it's bigger than Carson Wentz, man. Um, they finally got a decent running game which I don't know. I mean, if you want to count, what was it, 95 yards? If you want to count that as a running game, hey, whatever. But like Mike, like right. everybody said, man, the, Eagles, the Eagles have a ton of problems, starting with the GM to the coaches all the way down to some of these players. They're not buying in. Like Mike said, they, the way they created this little anthill of a team that they got um, – it's 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 laughable, man. I mean, you you, where's the defense at? Well, what happened to this? The, the Eagles to have this vaunted defense. What what happened to that? Um, I, I I don't even have much to say about the Eagles, man. Shout out shout out to the L.A. Rams. Um, they retooled. Like I said, if anybody watched the, the the Rams in the last three years, they're predicated on that on that run game and the play action. Once that once they get something with the run game and they hit you with the play action, if you are not covering Robert Woods, if you are not covering Cooper Cup, yes. you they are going to light you up. And that defense is playing way better than I expected. Um, yeah, so I I mean with, with the losses that they've had on that defensive line, they still playing like like they still there. So um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, man. It's gonna be interesting, but. Uh, the Eagles are a mess. Like we we talk about the Jets, we ain't gonna talk about the Jets, but the Eagles are a mess. Like for real, they are a mess. I see, I see the same thing, Ian. And, and me and me and Kev used to talk about Terrible. this on the phone all the time, man. About how there, there's a template in the NFL, and either they're gonna do it that way, which is the you got a, a young quarterback like Russ. You know, you don't have to pay him for three, four years. You bring up the rest of that team to win, right? And then you win. Now, what the Rams did wrong was that they didn't have to pay golf. They did not have to do that because they, they could build, continue to build up the Rams and maybe they wouldn't have had a bad year last year. Um, the, my, I told Kevin that happened. My Niners... I believe wholeheartedly they gave Jimmy the money too early because we didn't get a chance to build up the rest of the team. Now, we got a pretty good team because we were bad. So we got like four years of first-round draft picks. But that's the the one of the formulas is like you got a young quarterback. You don't have to pay him. You can build up the rest of the team and win the right. Super Bowl, you know. You did like listen. The reality is that Kansas City didn't have to pay Mahomes. The Texans didn't have to pay Watson. They weren't going anywhere for the next three years. But, actually, but four as, years. As actually, four right. years if you wanted to franchise them. So the reality is that you could have got the rest of the team put together. You know, right. and, and and done some things. And because the 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 the, the uh, uh, Patriot, I call the Giants way because I'm a little older and I know better. But 
the Patriot way is a lot harder to do. That's a psychology thing, you know, because what they do is they wait for older players who still got something in the tank that have never won anything. They bring them in to win, and they're all in to win for one year. Darrell Revis would have did anything. He would have shot a cat on the field to get that ring because he did everything else. He had done everything else in the game. He was the best. You know, he got injured. He came back, and you know, I'm going to go get this ring just to make sure I get this gold jacket and go get this ring real quick. You know, and you look at all the dudes that come in. Look, Junior Seau came in here. Rodney Harrison came in there. Uh, Corey Dillon before that. They, they, that's a psychology thing. Mm -hmm. They, Listen, man, these cats want to win. They'll do whatever it takes to win. They're not really bad dudes. The press gave them a, a you know, a, a whatever, <laughs> like they were, you know, idiots. But once they get here, there's never, ever, ever a problem. Never a problem. And we're good to go. That's harder to do than yeah, just I was... drafting a quarterback. Good, Kev. No, I, I was I was just going to say how, you know, like you said, New England, and the, the league is a copycat league. That's what I was going to say. So, one pays that one, then they're going to pay the next one, and then they're going to pay the another one, and now it's copycat. So, like you said, in the grand scheme of things, Mahomes didn't have to get paid, Watson didn't get paid, but they just did it, and that's what teams are doing now. They're locking up the quarterback all the time because they're thinking they might get away. But like you said, DA, they're not going away, at least for the first three years. They're not going nowhere. So, but that's it's, it. But listen, we're, we're, it's five, go ahead. five um, years. Go. It's three years of contract and five years. two franchise years. You know, that's why I say, mark right. my word, fellas, uh, Washington team, whatever they're called, Super Bowl next year. The football team, football club. Yeah, yeah, whatever. They you know, that defense. Washington football club. So sick. Well, and listen, um, we spend any money on, on your boy from Ohio State. No. No, they're not. Oh, can't hear nobody. Hello, hello, hello. We all yeah. muted, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, wait, I don't know, but it, now I had a moment where it zoomed <laughs> out for a second. It, nah, he right away into the Matrix. Wait for you. Nah, I think my, I think my, I'm sorry, my um, my, um, we talked about the NFL. We will get back to the NFL. I really want to talk about Deion Sanders. I think that's a really hot topic. Let me just read real quick. Deion Sanders will be the next football head coach at Jackson State. Um, for ESPN, he announced Saturday on his new podcast. God called me to Jackson, Jackson State. Sanders said on his first episode of 21st and Prime, according to transcripts, transcription by Clarence Ledger. Jackson State announced his hiring on Monday. Sanders, a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, following a stellar NFL career, to where he also played major baseball as a first-time head coach at the collegiate level. I'm truly blessed to be the 21st head coach of Jackson State University. Santa said in his school statement Monday, it's my desire to continue the stone story tradition and history of JSU and preferably bring more national recognition to athletes, the university, the sonic boom of the South and HBCUs in general. It's very big for Jackson State University director Ashley Robinson said, according to the Clarion Ledger's transcription, not only for Jackson State University, this is very big for the country right now, very big for the state of Mississippi. To Coach Prime, Jackson State University, a blue blood program full of Hall of Famers, it's just a great time. So I, I'm going to get my spill on this. I think this is an awesome thing that Deion Sanders is doing. Um, Deion Sanders could have had other professional gigs. Um, I believe today I looked at my phone around four o'clock this afternoon. I think he signed his son. His son was his first recruit, I believe. Somebody looked that up real quick. Um, he's doing, to me, I think he's just trying to bring some awareness and things to, to HS, HCBC, HSBU, BCU um, schools and some recognition. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with that, man. 
whether it be the football side, whether it be the basketball side. And I think it's really good that he's doing that. So with that said, um, Eric, jump in. What do you think about Prime? Yeah, man, I agree, man. Um, I think with all the other, you know, being that Prime Time is a high-profile guy, well-respected, um, he could have went anywhere. He could have did anything that he wanted, but to bring some kind to some kind of respectability back to the to Jackson State and trying to get some more eyes and and get get kids to go to these black schools, man. I think that's a, that's that's great. Um, I, I kind of wish that it could have been done a, a little while ago, but I mean everything comes in time. With that said, um, salute to Deion Sanders. And um, hopefully we'll get some more um, through the pipeline, man, not only through football, but basketball and other sports too, man. You know, that's one thing that I applauded mm-hmm. about the, the NBA with the um, with the G League. You know, is, is, is you got to give people other avenues, you know what I'm saying? You got to get them other lanes, other options, you know what I'm saying? It's not all about right. going to right. going to Tennessee or going to, 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 to Alabama or whatever. What about Middle Tennessee State? What about all these other little – you know what I'm saying? All these other dudes, uh, uh, schools and whatnot, man. So um, shout out to Prom and uh, hopefully this will this will start a. This is one uh, gravy train that I, I I hope a lot of people jump on and and ride it till the wheels fall off because it it can really bring some great things um, um to the light. And and to piggyback on what you said, Eric, you know, uh, you know the black schools back in the day they used to have. Um, they used to get legendary people come out. You look at Shannon Sharp, he came out of Savannah State. Um, Walter Payton, I believe, played at Jackson State. Um, so back, back Steve McNair, yeah, back Alcorn in the day, State. It used to be the pick of the litter, man. Um, yeah, you know, for the go ahead, D Dub. Even uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh had a, a a lot of players that came out of uh, um historical black colleges. So, uh, and you're correct about that. His he did um. His son, son got a scholarship there, uh, Jackson okay. State. So that's correct. Yeah. But um, a, it's a, yeah, it's a good, it's a good deal. I, I'm, I'm glad for, um, happy for Deion. So it, it, hopefully, it pans out. And um, what do you, what, a, you, what you think about the Nate? What do you think about the Nate says he hasn't coached nowhere. Yeah, well, so hasn't a lot of other coaches <laughs> that got jobs. And it, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm off that one. I, I don't even care no more. You know, if you get, you coach, you coach. If you got a job. They, they, they brought you in the coach, coach. I'm off that. Last line. week, y'all was saying Steve Nash shouldn't have a job, no, and sir. now y'all are praising Deion no, Sanders. No, no, no sir, no, that wasn't no. that wasn't nobody that was said that he shouldn't have a job. Show. Don't do that. that. Wrong, that if you gonna call it, call it correct. Don't do that. That was, that was the wrong show. Sorry, that, that, different that show. wasn't us, sir. No, different show. You must have been watching the sports tasers or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sports hazers or something, something. Yeah. It wasn't phasers. A phase, yeah. Hit them with the phasers, Spock. Yeah. So, yeah, the wrong, wrong show, bro. But um, yeah, I, 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 go ahead, D Doug. Go, go ahead, nah, D. Go ahead, go ahead, dear. I think it's a, I think it's a great move. Um, a lot of different levels. Um, Dion's a bold, uh, uh, uh leader. He's already, yes, uh, he, he already got a cat from Mississippi State University, transferring out of there. Uh, he's running after this recruit, a cat that's already committed to LSU, um, to get him um, because his cachet might be the only thing to get a kid away from that cash. And I'm gonna keep it hundred away from that cash, right? So, <laughs> right, um, right, right, right. So Dion's not he he doesn't have the money to offer, which is why kids, great, good kids. Uh, and I'm gonna say the kids that don't play, they're not good. They're just not as good as the ones that play. They're not as elsewhere. good as the ones that uh, play. Court. Yeah, because court. facilities. Because even if they are over a four-year period, the facilities that they have at you know LSU, as opposed to what they have. I mean, even at Ole Miss, you know, as opposed to what they have at Jackson State, are different. So that that will change some things and uh and Dion can't be expected to come out of his pocket to pay for everything you know new this do that new the other so uh well, maybe well I just go ahead no I'm I was I was saying I just read right before we came on now they're talking about 
revisiting or uh, building a new stadium for Jackson State. Yeah, well, so, yeah. well they got to win. Yeah. And, and I think you'll put a winning product on the field. NFL yeah, scouts, absolutely. like we talked about in the last section, if they're real scouts, they don't care where you're at. If you can bowl, you can bowl. Right? They'll come find you. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's historical. Um, <clears throat> as Daryl said, back in the days, 70% of the great players came from black schools because they weren't allowed to play at other schools. You had a few brothers playing at, at, at schools in the 60s um, and 50s, 50s and 60s, but it was very few. And they were really good. So, you know, you had your man Aldridge out there in um, Tennessee, who's a quarterback. I mean, so they had some dudes, but it wasn't a lot. I think what Dion is doing is great. I think it piggybacks off of what's, what's, what went on with those high school basketball players that decided to go to Howard. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's something right. to make people think, man. Like, listen, if you're not going to give me no money, or you're not going to give my father, so, you know, if, if he – is my uncle and my uncle E need a gig. And if you're not gonna give my uncle E no job at Notre Dame, I don't wanna be up here with all you white people. I'll go to I'll go down to Mississippi and I know you give my uncle the job then, you know, because you're gonna need him, you know, to do something. That's it's just becoming now guys weighing it out. Cause if you're not gonna pay me, I'm not one of those dudes at the upper, upper echelon of D1 athletes getting paid. I'm not doing, why am I going then? Because I don't want to be around these people. They don't want to be around me. You know, it's been shown over the last few years, y'all. Like, you know, you got the, the and I'm not going to go into that, uh, the, the, the march in uh, Virginia, different things you see. It's like, these young black dudes is looking like, these cats really don't want me around. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, serious, real talk. Like, why, why am I here to make Notre Dame money? Why am I here to make this school money and make that school money? Because that's what you are if you're not getting paid. If you're not getting no money, you know, remember that likeness thing? That went out the window because you know what they did? They got rid of the games, the, the video games that would have your likeness. So now you don't get paid anyway. Because the NCAA game is gone, right, Kevin? And they, they refuse. It's gone. Me and Eric and Daryl was just talking about that the other day, how yeah, so they haven't brought their game back, and they yeah. and they they don't want Because they have to pay. want to pay. Shout out yeah. to Ed O'Bannon. Yeah, they would have to pay you. Yes. So it yeah. shows you how greedy these people are. Yeah. And if these kids looked at it and did this, boy, it, it would change some things, man. Because even the this white This is folks, amateur sports. Hey, even the white folks, Kevin would stop watching an all-white basketball team in the fucking uh, uh, tournament, you know, it would be over. You know, even white people ain't watching that shit. So, there's going to be a bunch of Tyler Heroes, you know? Tyler Heroes, shout out to them. Ain't, ain't enough of them, you know what I mean? Yeah, he balled we'll, out, we'll, isn't we'll get no, to him. Not. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, get to him. him the, the point I'm saying is that even white people wouldn't watch an all-white if you turn on the bat on the TV and it was 10 white cats oh. playing basketball, period. You can't even find it. Mike Mills? So go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Mike, you muted it. There we go, there we go, there we go. But uh, I think the key here with Dion is opening doors. It's opening doors for the players already there. It's opening doors for kids who normally wouldn't look at HBCUs. Yes. It's opening doors for more money to come into the schools. It's opening more chances because they don't they don't promote that like they don't promote no. hey you should look at an hbcu when you grant when you graduate in high school when you look at towards going to college you they more you should go here you should go to this good old duke university thirty five thousand dollars a year or if you play sports man you should try to go to one of these blue blood programs where you just to face in the number but this could be a chance to see the other side and then how often do you get to actually learn from a, from one of the top cornerbacks of all time? Honestly. So you just got to see what his staff look like. All of what they're going to yes. put on the field. Yeah, we just got to see what, who, he, who he gets around him. Because he's never coached before. So you know he got to get the coach who's really the coach, even though he's not the coach. We got to see who he get to fill that role. We got to see who his coordinator is going to be. But I think they're going to they're gonna win some oh, games. True. 
And I think they're going to definitely create more opportunities, not just for the school and the players, but also for that community as well. And piggyback off of coaches, it's, um, there was a report about he had a, li- a star-studded list of coaches that's supposed to be on on his coaching staff. And one of them was Terrell Owens, and that has been um, debunked. Uh, he, he tweeted that this is absolutely wrong. This is how junk gets started. Not a good way to get started with me. He's like, wow. So, um, so th- he doesn't even know who his coaches is right at at this point. So, you know, again, fake news from the media, not doing it. You know, not doing their job. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. So. Yeah. Yo, they don't. They're gonna play till next year, right? Right, there's Correct. no black, black, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 not they're, not playing. Playing. they're not playing till next year. Right, so he and, got time too. On another yeah. note, uh, Notre to Dame, cool. Notre Dame had to stop their game, and then another team had to stop their game because the Notre Dame kids got an outbreak of the Rona. No, they rolled it out. Get out of yes, here, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, they imagine that. Them. Imagine oh, that during, during during the pandemic, right? God, right? How the hell do you get sick during the pandemic? Huh? So it, they're sick enough to where enough players on the team can't play that they can't play, and then the team that they played last week can't play now. This is what the we would lemon pepper, lemon pepper, lemon lemon pepper. Remember, <laughs> we told them. Yes, we told them. We, we yeah we told them and they and they still continue to play but to go back to Deion Sanders man I think this is something great and like Mike Mills says he's got a year to to get all this together and I think he's gonna really do some wonderful things down there and bring recognition and awareness to back to black colleges and where hey it's gonna be cool again and you know they they talked about you know DA always talks about the money about how things are. It's about the money. It's not. It's not about amateurs. And as I use that voice, um, it's never been about the amateurs. It's always been about the money. So shout out to my man Prime Deion Sanders, number twenty-one, doing his thing with Jackson State. Last but not least, man, we're going to talk about somebody talked about his heroes. So I'm going to talk about this first, the NBA, and we'll talk about the Miami Boston series, Eastern Conference Finals, the the Miami Heat are. Uh, one game away from going to the finals for the first time in almost 11 years. Um, excuse me. Uh, yeah, 13 years. Um, and to all these people that I woke up this morning and, and, and they were saying that I knew Miami was going to do this. Lies. There's two people on this thing right here. Well, Mike, go ahead. You know what I'm getting ready to say. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I just was clapping too. My own horn, you know, toot toot, beat beat. You know the vibes. But uh, anybody, Mike, Mike Mills. Yes. No, I'm yes. Mike. So, so, so a lot of people, like I said, I woke up. Oh, I, I had Miami going all the way. No, you just stop. Nobody. Mike Mills and I believe Eric. Eric, am I right? Yes. Yes, Eric, come in. Come in. Yeah. Jump in on yes, the fan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get some horns and whistles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, y'all see it. Yeah, y'all see it. Be like, Nori, make some noise. Woo! Yes, sir. Yeah, man. That Miami was a, was my sleeper, man. Um, Hey, what, what can we so, say? So, well, go ahead, Mike Mills. Go ahead. Um, Why do you think Miami is so successful in that one game away? Miami is so successful because this is the perfect environment for their situation. This is team basketball, played hard. It's no distractions, no going out and partying in between games. These is dudes that like to work hard. They got a rock solid leader, a Jimmy Butler. They got a head coach who's been there before. And then you got Pat Riley in the wings just peeking, just making sure everything is everything. Everybody they're playing past the sum of their parts. They are playing good team basketball. And shout out to Tyler Harrow. I watched the hoop mixtape when he was still in high school. That was the first time I seen him play. I said, that boy is not scared of nothing. The other team, John, he's, no, he's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's not scared of 
anything. And that is the key. 90, when I was a kid, somebody told me 90% of basketball is half mental. And that makes no sense when you think about it. But it makes all the sense in the right. world because nothing makes sense on the court. You can't be scared of anything. And Jimmy Butler has a bunch of bulldogs on the leash and they just out there flying and not caring. Shout out to the Miami Heat. And that's why they were my sleeper. Eric, go ahead, dog. Oh, just to piggyback off of what Millie said, man. Yo. Jimmy Butler, I think it was DA, or it might have been Mike a couple of weeks ago, said that Jimmy Butler is the unsung MVP of this season and it's, it's showing. Okay. It was DA. I knew it was one of y'all. Man, listen. DA, uh, Jimmy Butler is not scared of no one or nobody. And he fits perfectly with the Godfather, Pat Riley, and that whole chemistry of the Miami Heat. That's what they built on. They go out there, they compete, they're not scared of who you are, what your name say on the front or the back, what number you got, it does not matter. They're going to play and they're going to play hard and they, they're going to leave it all out on the court. Um, that's one of the things that I, I always respected um, watching through the through the buddy years and, and everything, um, they they always stuck to their guns, even with, with the little mishap with D-Wade or whatever, whatever. Yo, man, this is this is purely business. This is nothing personal. This is business. This is what we do. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you have to, when you have true leadership like that, you either get in line and get in where you fit in or you get the F out. It's just that simple. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to, they are going to uh, uh, keep the pressure on the cold to see if it's going to turn the diamonds or not. And right, right now, they're looking quite shiny. They're looking very shiny. So um, <laughs> with that said, you know, it's, it's never over until, you know, like I said earlier, until all them zeros uh, or, or on that clock. You know what I'm saying? We never know what Boston may have, but I, I think it's over. But, um. We'll, we'll, we'll see, man. It's going to be Miami back in the finals, man. And, uh, boy, that's going to be some fun times to talk about if a certain team make it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's your thoughts on Miami making it to um, the up 3-1? I hope, they, you know, we're uh, not taking anything for count, granted, but it looks, it looks like they... I, I don't know if they're going to win, but what I can say is that I appreciate what they do because they go by my mantra. Owners own, presidents, GMs, GMs, coaches, coach, and players, players. And that's what they do there, right? Um, they brought in one piece, one. That was Jimmy Butler. Everybody knew in the league he was a, a leader. In some places, people call him a malcontent, but those dudes are soft. Point blank, period. I'm not going to sugarcoat the shit. So when he was in Minnesota, they didn't like him because he called it out his own teammates and let them know, you, you're soft. You, you're soft. You, you're soft. Period. End of story. <laughs> that he, that um, he did, man. That he, he did. did. He didn't want to be in Philly because they wanted to keep him, but he didn't want to be in Philly. He wanted to leave. So he's in a place I think, you know, he's happy at. And you can see if they pass the ball, uh, they, they rebound the ball, they rebound as a team, they play good man-to-man -man defense. And if Hero or Miller, who is a D3 player, so that's why I say scouts do their jobs too. Duncan Rob, Duncan Rob, not Hero. Yeah, if, if, if him and, oh, and yes. they do what they do, man, listen, man, and you got Dragic. So you got the dragon and those other two or three point shooters. Jimmy Butler get it how we live. Andre Iguodala is out there trying to do what he do at eight hundred years old. Um, Channing, Channing Crowder, you know, and my man. I, and this is a, something my man texted me yesterday. I said, "Yo, when did when did dude's jumper get so wet?" And my man said, "Yeah, when LeBron stopped screaming at his ass, and he could get it together, then his jump shot got right." You know, so some people work in different situations better than other ones. So, so that being said, they got a really good team. And 
second in, second in the running for rookie of the year, Mr. Nunn, doesn't play at all. I think he's logged 15 minutes the whole playoffs, just so you know how deep they are. Should be interesting, man. Should be really interesting. And shout out to Andre Iguodala for playing chess, not checkers. See what happens when you wait until yep. there's a market for you and you can end up where you want to go? He ain't want to play in Memphis. And now look at him. One game away from the finals. Does he, did he not want to play in Memphis because of your guy that you didn't like? Nah, that wasn't Fisdale. Fisdale was in New York. <laughs> he ain't want to okay. play because he ain't want right. to play with them, them young boys. Told y'all about Fizz there. Got to. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. You go. Yo, you go. What's your what's your what's your thing about Miami and this Miami team reminds me of the, the old Knicks teams, man. They play defense, they you know, but they got better. I mean, you look at the stat line from yesterday, shooters. man. Every, yeah, better shooters, man. I mean, Tyler Herrible, man. I I don't even know where this guy came from, man. Like I said, y'all just said it. Um 37 points off the bench. I mean, really? Wow. Then you got drag it a, a, a bio, a bio. That's how you say it? a bio. Mm-hmm. Twenty points. Butler twenty four. I mean, yo, it's gonna be interesting. On paper, Boston looked like the better team to me. Boston, I thought would be the better. Team, and I thought they would be no. the better team, but he paper be, champions. Yeah, paper champions, and you can't. You know, what's in your heart is in your heart, man. You can't. They 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 willing themselves through the uh, through the series right here, so you know shout out to them. Um, and you look at Boston. I mean, it was a close game. I mean, you got Kimball with twenty, Tatum with twenty eight, Jalen Brown with twenty one. I mean, you shouldn't lose this game. I mean, you would think that they're gonna win this game, but when you got Marcus Smart uh, finally um, landing back off. to earth, yeah, he cooled off ten points. He was a uh, Two rebounds, eleven assists, though. But double double, he still had a, a decent game, but he cooled off. But um, hey man, they won game away, man. And like I said, um, I, I, from the way they look playing, it looks like they're gonna go ahead and go on and move on to the Eastern Conference. I mean, to the championship round. So you know, we'll see. They got to play on Friday night, I believe. Friday night. And um, Friday you know, night, see, the Lakers and. Let's see if Boston has the, you know, can stay off of elimination. All right, one thing I'll let you know, my boy Calipari, boy, all the stuff dudes talk. He let you know, me, I, I make them pros. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, I'm going around and then we're going to have to pull it in here. We'll- what y'all think about the the Laker Denver series? Denver grabbed one the other night. It's two to one. It's, to me, my opinion it should be two to one Denver. Um, if, every time, AD don't want to play no five. And I got guys shaking their head. Mike Miller, go ahead, man. You're muted, sir. I was You're saying muted. Denver. Is, nah, 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 nah. Hello, hello. There we go. You're good. I was saying yeah, Denver and six. Yeah. I was saying Denver and six, but they dropped that one on that BS three. Because if Anthony Davis is going to beat me from behind the three point line, I'll take it all day. Ain't no way he's going to beat me from behind that line. Yeah. And it was contested. It was a good. I mean, it was just a better shot. I mean, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Even the blonde squirrel finds the nut eventually. But uh, nah. Denver and seven. Shout out to Joker. Yeah. Save the centers. Say the centers, yes. Say the centers. Do you know? Yeah. You know, uh, Lakers and I'm Denver. You know, I, I'm rooting for Denver, but, you know, I I think the Lakers is probably the better team, but I, I, um, I'm pulling for Denver. Hopefully they can pull it out. Like I said, like you said, um, you know, we could say you should have, could have, would have. It should be 2-1 Denver, but uh, they didn't, they didn't, you know, like Mike said, that shot right there was a good contested shot by – um. What's my man's name? The center, Joker. Um, he he had hands in hands in his face, everything. So I mean, it was just a better shot. So you know, shout out to uh, AD. He made a yeah. terrific shot. 
And, um, you know, we'll see. They got a game tonight. Um, I'm sure Lakers yep. will be coming out uh, intense, really intense, trying to get this game, trying to get them out of here. So so Denver has to play that much of a better game. Yeah. They got to be way atop of what the Lakers is going to bring tonight. Yeah, you beat. Yeah, I would like Denver to win. Um, I, I do think it's a little bit. Um, I, I think they got taken off the side by. Um, no one knew or thought Rondo was going to play that good. Like those twenty point games for Rondo, that's you don't you don't calculate that, and, and I think that's what hurt him. Um, Gary Harris Jr. got to get up in Ronda a little bit more. I can't hear you, Kev. Kev, you're lagging. You're lagging a bit. I don't know if there's an internet connection out there. Yeah, Kev, you lagging a little bit. Yeah, Due to technical know. difficulties, I'll take over yeah. as the host and moderator. Go Kev, ahead, man. DA. Go on to finish your idea, my good brother. <laughs> now, nah, I was saying that, you know, we, we're, we're thinking that um, there's certain, you know, Caldwell Pope, like 10-point games. Um, what's your man from uh, San Antonio? Danny uh, Green. Danny Green. Yeah, you know, I, I understand that these are good players, but Gary Harris Jr. should be able to shut one of them down. Um, and Indeed. If, and if you can do that, I think front court, you're probably doing okay against them. I mean, because the Denver front court actually consists of more dudes because you get nothing from the centers on the Lakers. Uh -huh. you 10 points and 10 rebounds between the three of them. That's true. Right? Between... Uh, um, Javel and your man, um, uh, D Grabber, um, and oh and my, uh, <laughs> so you're gonna call him on a family show? All right, hey, I, oh, oh. I, I caught it, but I'm not gonna yeah, talk about who we talking took me about. A okay, I got, I, yeah, yeah okay, okay, but you would think the Lakers would be a little more switchy, seeing like how they did with. With the Rockets, but you know, AD yeah. don't want to play big against no big guys, so I yeah. get it. They don't want to sneak so, Markeith in there. Yeah, so I mean, now so Morris had a good game. He he shot the three pretty good, but I think there are certain players, and, and Kuzma, you know, does well. So I, I think we need more Gary Harris Jr. playing defense. You need more Michael Porter Jr. playing defense on yes, because uh, um, he has the length to get up with. He doesn't have the body. Because, you know, at this point in time, Anthony Davis is a little bit more broad. But he should be able to at least play off him and do some things. So you need those wins. And, you know, LeBron is, is LeBron. Um, you got to almost consider it like the Michael Jordan years where he's going to get some calls. And, you know, of course. charging is regular for him. Like, so it's, it's not charging. It's just him playing. You know, it's not charging, but it's – Can you hear me? Yeah, we're getting uh, you a little bit now. You sound like a, sound like Domo already got to Mr. Robotic. Sounding robotic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think it should be interesting. I just I'm happy to see. I think this playoffs was better than I thought it would be for what I watched. So and I didn't watch everything. So um I think we should be fine as far as the team is concerned and, and uh Denver. It, it should be doing, you know, is essentially uh they should be able to get it in six or seven games, man. Because I think the Lakers at some point in time are going to slow down because they are older. So, yeah. But we'll see because Rondo hadn't been there. So, Rondo had, he did make a good point with Rondo being the X Factor. That's very been interesting these last two series. Now, James E., what do you have to say about this interesting well, series? Just like how you said about Rondo, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and say that nobody thought that Jeremiah Grant was going to drop 26 on the Almost last game. Most definitely. So. So That's you know, we, one thing That's about a good one. one thing yeah. about um, you know, you got these stars. You know, the stars gonna get their points or whatever. But it's also about these X factors. 
Jones. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm I'm Very really true. waiting for Michael Porter Jr. to mark his spot and take over. That's what I've been waiting on, to be honest. Murray's going to show out every so often. Joker's going to do Joker things or whatever. We know that. But we need these other guys to step up. And I think Michael Porter Jr. should be that dominant number three that the Lakers did not see coming. Um, Agreed. That being said, I, I'm, I'm rooting, just like everybody else here said, I'm rooting for Denver. Um, yo, man, <laughs> the GOAT of this era is, you know, he, he looked kind of lethargic in the last game. I don't know what was going on or whatever. He missed some gimmies and this and that. The third, he didn't seem like he was all the way engaged, but, yo, man. 700 years old, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, but yo, know, you like like we said about uh like we said about uh Julio Jones, man. Yo, you on the court, you gotta show up. Especially when you are the leader. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Everybody's yeah. gonna follow your your footsteps. So Yeah, when you marquee, man, your box office, you gotta show up. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanna warn Denver. LeBron had that look after that last game, he's gonna come out swinging. Oh, yes, so yeah. if they could withstand the first the yes. first flurs, yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, y'all can hear me. Oh, the host yes. is back. Yes, I'm I'm back. Go ahead. Yes, sorry about that. Yes, yeah. my internet is really wacky where I'm at. So, um, go ahead, Michael. Finish your point, and we're gonna do party yeah. shots. Yeah, LeBron. Yeah, LeBron's gonna come out swinging. <laughs> Denver's just gonna have to withstand them first flurries, and they'll be all right. Yeah, but definitely Denver. I agree, but I, I really need Denver. I need like like Da said. I need the Gary Harris's of the world. I need everybody to show up, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, you're not they got, shooting they the ball. Show up. If you're not shooting the ball, I need you to play some D. I need you to get a block here in there. I need you to get a steal. I need to reach your hands in there when somebody um, um, run into the rack. I need you to take a charge. I need you to do something. You know what I'm saying? But um, we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see. Parting shots, parting shots. We'll start off with DA. DA, what you got for us, man? Good show today. Good show. Good show. Hey, um, we still have to, uh, folks, be careful. Um, though they want you to believe things are like normal and it's like it was, it's not, and it'll never be. So be careful. Take care of yourselves. God bless you. And good night. Well, moderator, I can't hear Mr. you. Mr. Moderator, moderator, where you at? Yeah. But well, hey, my part of shots. Hey, everybody be good. Uh, good show tonight. And we'll see you next week. Sorry, I keep missing everybody. Go ahead. <laughs> no, man. Go ahead. Who was talking? Mike, go ahead, Mike. You muted, Mike. You muted. Uh, Eric, go ahead and finish this up. Oh, you got oh your part of shot? appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yo, once again, uh, shout out to Miami Heat. Shout out to Bird Gang, Arizona Cardinals. Ka uh, Car C. Kyler did his thing. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wanted to talk about my team today, but that's all good. I'll get y'all <laughs> on the recap maybe later on. If we go 3-0, you know what I'm saying? You'll see me soon. Um, everybody, on a, on a positive note, though, everybody be safe out there. Uh, we got a lot of unrest going on in the world, man. Yo, man, watch out. For everyone in your household, watch out for your neighbors, man. Just, just, just try to, try to be good, man, and 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 stay safe out there. All right, since the host is not here, I guess I'll close it out. Before I get my part and shots, let me shout out our handles on the internet so you can find us. Find us on Instagram at Sports Chasers Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Chaser Sports. Find us on SoundCloud at Sports Chasers Inc. That's incorporated for the fancy folks out there. And you can find us on YouTube at Sports Chasers Podcast. And for my part in shots, I'm going to go a little heavy today. Um, Due to COVID. Yeah. <laughs> He's jumping in at the worst time. Hey. I got it. I got it. I got it. This internet before they go out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right. I'm going to go a little heavy today. All right. Due to this COVID and these unforeseen circumstances, it's taking a toll on everybody. And everybody, I mean everybody, in different ways, shapes, and forms. In the recent years, the NBA players have been talking about mental health, 
dealing with depression. And because, as they say, money doesn't fix everything. So I want to give a shout out to Dak, who I'm not the biggest fan of, for speaking out on that before the season started. I want to give a shout out to Kevin Love for talking about it over the past couple years. And I want to give the shout out to anybody out there struggling with depression or any other mental illnesses during this current time. Oh, give Ron Artest my credit too. And yeah. definitely shout out to Ron right Artest, the Queensbridge legend himself, who thanked his therapist on national television. And as Marshawn Lynch said, take care of yourself and take care of your chickens. That is my part of shots for the night. So on behalf of the other guys and the host and moderator who's stuck in the bando somewhere, Kevin yeah. L. Warren, this has been the Sports Chasers Podcast. Thank you and good night. Somebody cue the music. I don't yeah, know if this the, the, the DJ going too? Oh, yeah, man. Hey, yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. This, yeah. this, this guy right here, man. man. We don't pay yeah, our yeah. money. We I, don't I pay our say money. Else, man. I'll wait till after the show. Yeah. yeah, we don't pay our money. I got, un- what I got unlicensed music. Yeah, nah. Unlicensed. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Mike. Yo, I own you. this. I own this. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Fade out to this. Yeah, yeah. 16th Street, niggas, nah, we don't.